Hello and welcome to this discussion on DNB Anesthesia paper for uh, April 2023. So my name is Dr. Janvi and we have started this new series where we are going to discuss the model solutions to the pre previously asked DNB Anesthesia theory papers. Now here we are going to start off with the April 2023 exam. This is the paper one and I'm going to be briefly discussing with you all how to answer the questions. What are the subtitles that you should put it in? For five marks, how many points to be written? For 10 marks, how many points to be written? Now, there are a few things when it comes to DNB exams which you need to remember. And that is that your answer should always be relevant to the question asked. Please don't write um, the whole pathophysiology, management, as well as anesthetic concerns of anything that they ask you if in the question specifically, they are asking you one subheading. Suppose they say that write the anesthetic concerns in a patient who is posted with a large retrosternal thyroid mass. Do not go and write about the clinical signs, symptoms, what you will ask in pre-op, what will you uh, do for preparation of OT. No, all that is not required because two things. One, they are not going to give you extra marks for writing extra things. They want you to be to the point. And two, you do not have so much time because DNB theory papers are quite lengthy. So if you start writing extra stuff in one question, you may just miss out on a couple of important questions which you know the answer to. So make sure that your answers are always relevant. Make sure your answers are concise and to the point. So I'm sure all of you all have been learning this since school days. The best way to write any paper is to write the answer in points. So you put the heading and then you write the description of the heading. Then you put the heading, then you write the description of the heading. So when you put headings, when the examiner is correcting the paper, he's not going to go through everything that you have written in the matter. He's just simply going to look at your headings and see that you have covered all the points that are required for answering that question and give you the marks. So this actually makes the examiner quite happy because their work, their burden is reduced and this may just fetch you some extra good marks on their point. The third important thing is wherever possible, please include diagrams. Now, I'm not asking you to be MF Hussain, but you can definitely make some uh, very simple diagrams like I'll show you now in the question of HPV. You can make a very simple diagram of a deflated alveoli and an inflated alveoli. And these are the simple schematic structural diagrams which in a way, show that your paper is slightly different as compared to the rest of the paper. And so the next part that I want to tell you about is your speed is really important when you're uh, writing your DNB papers. So these papers are very lengthy. They ask you uh, 10 questions. In 10 questions, they actually have hidden 20 long lengthy questions because there are uh, almost sub questions to every question of 5 5 marks. So as a result of this, please make sure that you're timing yourself. What happens is that we never solve any practice papers uh, before the main exam exam and on the day of the main exam you will require uh, you will realize that you're actually running short of time so i would highly suggest those who are exam going that at least one day before your uh like suppose your exam is a month away or one and a half month away just sit and write some practice questions so that you can time yourself and know how much time you can give per question okay so with that let's start off with uh, paper one the first question that they asked in paper Paper one is what is hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction? What is the effect of anesthesia on hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction? So as you can see, they have given the markings, two marks for what is HPV and three marks for what is the effect of anesthesia on it. The second part of the question is enumerate the interventions that can help prevent atelectasis during anesthesia. And this is like five marks. So ideally, when I look at these kind of markings of the question, I know that Five marks means I should write about eight to ten interventions that are important to prevent atelectasis under uh, during anesthesia. And uh, this would fetch me like half a mark per point. And even if I write the headings, the examiner will know that I know the answer to it. So what is HPV? Now I divide my answer into uh, approximately... Uh, seven to eight points. So the first thing I'll mention is hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. 
constriction is also called as the euler lich strand mechanism now i when i write these kind of things which only i know or only people who have actually gone through uh, theory notes know then i will underline this in the exam okay so i'll underline this so that the examiner knows ki bhai i know more uh, as compared to someone who has studied in the last 2 3 months of the exam so immediately when you put these kind of words the examiner gets completely um, impressed by the fact that yes you have taken efforts to go through your theory to study your portion well okay then the second point i will write is what is the mechanism of hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction now if we try to understand the mechanism is quite easy what happens is this hpv usually happens when we are giving one lung ventilation so imagine this is the lung which is not getting ventilated and this is the alveolus which has deflated and this is the lung or the alveolus which is getting inflated so this is the alveolus from the other lung where we are ventilating so when this alveolus which is not ventilated it collapses it it basically becomes hypoxic because there is no oxygen going into it so the alveolus collapses when the alveolus collapses there is release of certain substances which we'll study ahead and these substances go and act on the blood vessels that are supplying this alveolus now these substances when they act on the blood vessel what do they cause they end up causing vasoconstriction so it is saying in simple words that there is no requirement of blood flow to this collapsed alveolus this collapsed alveolus is useless it's not going to take in oxygen it's not going to give out carbon dioxide so there is going to be no exchange of gases so why should i waste my blood flow on this collapsed alveolus so what happens is the blood flow from this vasoconstricted vessel or from this area goes and it causes vasodilation in the alveolus in the blood vessel which is supplying the ventilated alveolus okay so this is the part of the lung which is getting ventilated so the blood vessel which is supplying the ventilated alveolus vasodilates now why does it vasodilates so that it gives it a better opportunity to carry out exchange of gases so basically the hypoxic alveolus blood supply to it is reduced and this blood supply is diverted to the well ventilated alveolus so there is vasoconstriction due to hypoxia now they will ask you in the exam that so when i mention this mechanism i don't simply mention the mechanism i write it down in points and i write it with headings okay so first thing that happens point number 1 there is alveolar hypoxia point number 2 there is initiation of vasoconstriction in response to alveolar hypoxia point number 3 because of this vasoconstriction the blood flow is redistributed from the uh, less ventilated or non ventilated part of the lung to the ventilated part of the lung okay what is the use of this there is matching of ventilation and perfusion and this helps in optimizing the vq ratio now one more thing you can add over here that hpv is unique to the lungs now this does not happen in systemic a uh, circulation systemic arteries will never vasoconstrict in response to hypoxia if you look at systemic arteries like suppose coronary artery of one area is not receiving enough oxygen so in fact it will dilate in response to hypoxia so that it can try and absorb as much oxygen as possible so systemic arteries actually have the ulta effect of hpv so hpv is unique to the lungs itself okay so this is how i'll write five points of the mechanism of action of hpv the next will be what is the stimulus of hpv how is hpv initiated now we all know that hpv is initiated when there is hypoxia to an alveolus however they will specifically ask you that how much should be the hypoxia to the alveolus okay so this is when the pao2 or the alveolar partial pressure of oxygen falls less than 100 mm hg then there is release of certain substances which will cause vasoconstriction or hpv okay the next thing that they will ask in the exam is what are the uh, stimulatory factors that are released that will act on the blood vessel and cause vasoconstriction so whenever there is hypoxia or whenever in this alveolus the oxygen partial pressure falls to less than 100 there will be release of vasoconstricting substances like leukotrienes there will be reduced release of prostaglandins there will be release of histamine there will be a reduction in the dilatory substances okay so if you look over here nitric oxide actually cause vasodilation 
so there will be reduced production of nitric oxide and hypoxia itself causes direct action on the blood vessels and because of direct action on the blood vessels there will be vasoconstriction okay so all of these substances leukotriene prostaglandin histamine nitric oxide direct action all of these will cause the vasoconstriction